In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do string prints or string pulls. And it's a way that can be very spontaneous and make really interesting sort of marks on the paper. And I got really addicted to doing them. But I found that I wasn't all that excited by the finished product of them. They all just look the same for the most part, these looped um, marks from the string. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our string pull prints and then you're going to draw on them, collage on them, make them into something that has more content, more meaning, more of a narrative, maybe storytelling, something that becomes a better work of art and something that says and communicates something about what you feel as an artist um, rather than looking like everybody else's, everybody else's string pulls. So let's get started. For our materials, I have a selection of thread or strings, just regular sewing, string, this is hemp or jute, something like that, and some yarn that I had. The paper that I'm going to use is, got a selection here, so this is Strathmore drawing paper. This is the Yasutomo washi that I recommended in your material list. This is computer paper, bond paper. This is nice cover stock that I had, and this is Reeves BFK, which is a printmaking paper. The papers that have that are crisp, right, have a little weight to them, tend to work better. Actually, the yes Yasutomo doesn't work great for this project. What we're gonna do is use watercolor or ink or even food and dip different lengths of the string or thread into it and then place another piece of paper on top and pull it through. And it can make really interesting marks. It can be really, really subtle if you don't have a whole lot of ink or it can be really heavy and sort of crazy. This project is so that you'll print some of these and then draw on them. So I don't think these work all that great by themselves, but they sure could be uh, a great start to a drawing. So be sure you don't cover up the printing part with your drawing. We should able, be able to see both. Some of the prints, the more crazy I got and looser with the ink and let it just splash all over the place, um, I kind of really like them. So I, I, you know, made some messy ones. Also, the Yasutomo paper doesn't hold up very well. I mean, it's, it's actually starting to crumble sort of away here or braid. But I think that on this other side, it actually looks kind of cool. And maybe I will use that or maybe I'll use it as part of a collage in a larger drawing or something. And then here's another one that I did on the Yasutomo. And basically I had this be the base paper. So it got a lot of the ink and the paint on it. But as it dried, I kind of have this wonderful lighter string on there. So again, this paper is pretty um, thin and absorbent and then this side looks even better, I think. So, you know, this is about having fun and making spontaneous marks and then thinking about what do I want to draw with this? You know, how different could this drawing be really I don't know, delicate and detailed and everything. And maybe the drawing that I do on this is more spontaneous and more loose. The inks and paints I was using, diluted Sumi ink, the Akua liquid pigments work great, water soluble block printing ink, um, watercolor. This is also Japanese Sumi, um, the red. And then you could use the oil-based aqua wash or Caligo Cranfield's uh, washable ink. That stuff actually works pretty great, but for this demo, I'm sticking with the water-based. Thanks. Other stuff that I have is I have empty food containers that I've put in my uh, sumi that I've diluted a bit with water so it's not totally black, and that's just a personal preference. Watercolor, um, you know, again, different colors and the green and this blue or the Akua inks. Other stuff is just a bowl of soapy water and um, an old jar with some water in it so I can dilute um, the ink as I work. Another good thing to have 
is a phone book, works great, or a heavy book, a book that you don't care about. So if it gets splashed with a little stuff, that's no big deal. Um, but this will help a lot. Uh, actually, a phone book's just perfect. I'm going to start with a piece of yarn. And this is kind of one arm and neck's worth. Uh, I want something that's the right size that I can actually easily hold it up to get to the bottom of the string. So for me, that's about 33 inches or so. And then on one end, I'm going to make a knot because we're basically sandwiching this inky um, string yarn between two pieces of paper and then we need to pull it. And I found if I don't make a knot, on that end, it's really hard for me to pull sometimes. You want really good pressure, so uh, this just helps quite a bit. All right, put it in the semi ink. You can see my hands have already been stained by doing this all day today. Uh, but so what? You know, I'm not going to a fancy dinner, so um, it'll wear off in a couple days. But <laughs> if that, um, if you don't want to do that, you could wear a disposable glove or something like that. All right, so I want to get this yarn really, really wet. However, I want to blot it. So sometimes I do this, or I just hold it up against the cup, and so all the excess goes out. I really like the subtlety of what the prints look like when um, they're under inked, kind of thing. So I would say if you're practicing the first time, maybe just use computer paper. That's what this is. So you can just get kind of a hang of what it's going to do. Notice that as soon as I touch that, it began to puddle. So the computer paper, oh, I'm sorry, this is the Yasu Tomo paper. It has no sizing in it, so that's why it's so absorbent. I like kind of having it on the bottom. It absorbs the excess. This is the Strathmore paper. I'm going to put that on top, and actually I'm going to put it like this so I can reach that knot. And I'm going to put this under here. Okay, then I'm going to put downward pressure and then pull. And the tighter the pressure is and um, the less amount of ink can make for really cool marks. It's, it's just play around with it and see what it does. So look how cool. You can see on the this on the washi paper, it's so absorbent, doesn't really have any sizing. I mean, look how nice that is. I should have put something in underneath it next time. Um, but on the less absorbent Strathmore drawing paper, notice how I got these really beautiful subtle marks. So very, very different two prints from the same pull. For this print, I'm going to use the Akua ink, and I'm going to put uh, the washi down underneath and see if this bleeds through and I get something nice looking there. And then I'm going to use this one. So you can print multiple times. So this is the same Yasutoma washi. This is the Strathmore drawing paper. Because I want this to bleed through, another thing I've done is I'm just holding, pulling the string up against the brush and that blots it a little bit too. I didn't get much underneath, but that's all right. Could use that as the bottom paper for another print that I do. Look how pretty and delicate this turned out though. And look how very different the same pull, the bottom paper as opposed to the upper paper, how absorbent the paper is, all that stuff makes a difference. I find that usually the top print, you get more of the detail happening than the bottom one. So 
so far, I'm much more interested in drawing on that than I am on this, but who knows, I might keep layering this and have this be a bottom piece and then just see what it looks like after a while. So I might do this. The yarn really picks up a lot of ink and so you get a very different kind of mark. So I'm squeezing to, to kind of get rid of the excess, but I'm not doing it too hard, so there's still quite a lot of ink on there. And again, I have two pieces of paper in the bottom, hoping that uh, maybe this will go through a little bit and I'll get something interesting happening. Here's another print that I had that I'm not that excited about. So I'll just uh, do this again. Look at how it wants to just come right through that. So why not? I'll make a four layer cake there. Okay, and then. So I kind of had real heavy pressure on the book and then not a lot and then really heavy again at the end. Let's see what that does. I can tell I had so much ink, but oh. Cool. <laughs> now it's getting really kind of blotchy. Wow, that looks cool. And I even got something on the bottom. So um, <laughs> it's kind of really fun when it's just like almost dripping wet. But still, look at those marks. That's pretty cool. thought I'd see how it would work to do a print using, you got it, mustard. And mustard, of course, is this perfect consistency. So I'll show you what I did. This is regular computer printer paper. This is a piece of string, thread. I've tied a knot here, and this has just happened as I've used it, so I just leave that in there. And then I just sort of decide on what I want to do here. Put it down on the piece of paper. Normally I would want this to be hanging out so I could grab it, so I'll just move it. This is another piece of bond paper. Just pull the thread right out. And it's always a surprise. Well, that's pretty cool. What are you going to draw with? How about Prismacolor pencils? How about markers? More markers. How about regular pencils? <laughs> How about uh, more markers? How about a dip pen and the Sumi ink? How about watercolors? Or even how about crayons? I know you have something that you can use for hand coloring. I am completely open if you want to hand color by using sticks and dirt. If you want to make yourself stencils that you can draw around and incorporate. If you want to stamp onto your thread pulls. If you want to cut some of them out and make collages it's all totally fine with me. So you can incorporate um, any of those into how you hand color or change your prints if you want for the project. If you want to, when you do your drawings, you can cut them down. Remember, there's a minimum size for the print paper, but then your drawings can be cut down to either four by six or five by five or larger. So I made myself two windows that I cut out of paper so that I can look at this and decide what sort of composition would be good, would be more successful than the way it looks on the paper right now. The way it looks right now, I've got a mark here, and this is smaller than all this negative space around it, so it would work better if I cropped away some of that. These prints... 
I really like how subtle it is, and I like the idea of drawing them maybe with um, dark black ink as a way to rework this. Also, once I start cropping this, the stripe becomes more dominant. Almost looks like a landscape or trees. I can get ideas for how I might want to print that or draw on it, I should say. This one, I really like how delicate these marks are, but this is such a big kind of blotch on there. Again, if I crop it and minimize some of this, I'm left with something that I find pretty interesting. It could be a landscape, could work with that, and again, I could go in with more delicate sort of marks. What if you have prints on the washi that's all buckled and kind of in a bad shape? It's fine with me if you want to use that. Um, think about, though, if you're going to do collage that you try to do and use good craft with your pasting. This one, too, just like a lot of the other ones, I like shifting the balance over and using this negative space as a way to choose the best parts. If I draw on this, which I also like, if I cropped it like that, then I've got to think about how maybe I want to go in with lighter drawing materials, like white materials, so it would show up against that dark background. So I highly recommend that you think about making a window to help you figure out your compositions. I made four final drawing and collages over the string prints. This is uh, the first one that I worked on. I think you can see this is that really heavy um, string pull there that I showed earlier in the video. I actually cut this open and put another one behind it and really wanted was working quite a bit on balancing all that blue on there. There's watercolor, sumi ink, pan, graphite pen and Prismacolor pencils in this one. Here's another one that I did. It actually has quite a lot of little collage pieces uh, kind of throughout the whole thing in this. A lot of Prismacolors. This is actually a little uh, easy cut block that I carved and stamped on there. I ended up deciding not to crop the paper down and I worked with the paper that I had originally um, printed on. So these are larger than 4x6 or 5x5. Five five. The original string pole is this big brownish sort of um, shape here and then the orangey brown sort of shape. Everything else is either hand colored, Prismacolor colored pencils, screen print, uh, collage piece of paper. This is another string pull print that I on washi that I pasted down to see the back of the paper so it has a very different sort of look and a lot of work with Prismacolor pencils and watercolor on this. I believe I showed you this one when we were talking about cropping. So that is the sister to this one that I worked on. So the string pull is just these marks in the background, the sort of vertical marks and then the horizontal marks across the bottom. This has a lot of collaging in it as well. This is a woodcut printed on tracing paper that I've um, glued on there. These are woodcuts, pieces of woodcuts. Um, that is another string pole, uh, other things like that. That's also a piece of paper collage. I hope this video has helped you know how to do a string pull and you're excited to give it a try. In particular to my students, I just want to say I'm really looking forward to seeing your finished projects and I hope everybody has fun doing this.